as you know, during this coronavirus isolation period, I am running free workshops on YouTube in lieu of my regularly scheduled Saturday group classes. And in each of these online workshops, I feature concepts and techniques that we can work on in the privacy of our own home, even in a small space on carpet, um, to even alone to continue um, improving our dancing. And the dance that I'd love to focus on today is the International Foxtrot. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a little routine that you can fit in a potion stamp and you can repeat um, in your living room, okay? So the first step we're gonna start with is a feather. This usually starts diagonal center. our feather, which for man is heel, toe, toe. Now we'll do a reverse turn. Heel, toe, toe. Now we're going to do a basic weave. Toe, 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 toe. And then we're going to do a hover telemark. Heel, inside edge, toe. And that'll repeat. Heel, feather, Reverse, basic weave, hover telemark. Okay, now I'm gonna go over the timing. And ladies, I'll get to your part in a second, obviously we're doing the natural opposite of him. So for ladies, I'm gonna do my prep, five, six, seven, eight. Our feather step is back, back, back. Our reverse turn, this is arguably the toughest step ever invented in ballroom dancing, back, Close, spin on the heels, and exit forward through him on the right toe. Now we're going to do our basic weave. Forward, back, back, forward, forward, side, back. And now we're going to do our hover telemark. Back, side, back, feather step, and the routine, the routine repeats, okay? Um, so, let's talk about the timing. Um, I'll count it in slows and quicks, and then I'll count it in numbers. Um, and it's the same timing for both man and lady. So I'll just do lady's part this time, but I'll be counting slows and quicks leads. You're welcome to dance your part along with us. Five, six, seven, we have a slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, 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 slow, quick, quick, repeat. Slow. Okay. Now we'll do the man's part. I'm going to do timing again, but this time I'm going to say numbers. It's not right or wrong to think in terms of um, numbers or slows and quicks. I personally prefer um, numbers, but that doesn't work for some people. Um, I like it because it helps me stay on phrase. So I'll count this one in numbers, for, and I'll do ladies' part, but men can definitely dance along with us. Actually, I'll do man's part, and ladies, you dance along with us. We'll do numbers five, six, seven, and one. Three, four, five, seven, eight, one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Three, four, repeat. And then for the sake of practice at home, we'll just start on a one again. One, three, four, five, seven, and one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Three, four, and it repeats. Um, the Aver Telemark is actually a silver figure. The other three figures are bronze. Um, I love that figure. Um, it's similar to um, a change of direction in bronze, but I like it because it's four counts instead of six counts. Um, so if you have already learned your change of direction, which I assume if you're watching this video, you're an intermediate or an advanced level dancer, um, this figure will be heel for man, inside edge, toe and it's a toe outside of partner. And then I commence into a feather step outside of partner. Uh, the, if I were to do a change of direction here, it'd be a six count figure, similar. It, it, it um, has the same kind of angles, but uh, it's a slow, 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 and this is a heel going forward inside of the partner that makes it a six count figure. Um, it's not wrong to do that versus the, the hover telemark that I'm showing, uh, but since Foxtrot has four beats in a measure and the change of direction has six beats, musically it's going to put you 
off phrase. So it's not gonna look quite as uh, cool coming out unless you immediately follow um, as fast as you can with a six count figure. Um, and for Lady, I find it's easier to follow when he's dancing on phrase. Um, so as long as you're not competing in bronze, um, I would recommend doing the average tail mark instead of the change of direction. It'd be prettier and easier to follow. Okay, so uh, let's talk about our heels and toes. So for man, feather is heel, toe, toe, reverse turn, heel, toe, toe, toe. So that was an early rise to make her do that heel turn. As lady, she is not going to want to do that heel turn. That is the most unnatural feeling in the world. So I trick her into doing that ninja style by going heel, toe, early rise, block her off. And then I put this left foot back on one track. So she has no choice but to go through me. Um, leads often don't have early enough rise and not enough turn in on the right foot. Something like this, I'll show it back. Heel, toe. And then she ends up cattywampus outside of you. It still works, but it's not correct. And, and as lady, I'm making educated choices and it's very confusing when he leads something kind of unusual that's outside of syllabus. I'm just not gonna follow as readily. So once again, the key to leading that heel turn for me, early rise on the left foot, heel toe, I'm on a toe, 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 and I block her off with that pigeon toe. Now she has no choice but to come through me, which is what I want, okay? Now I have that basic weave. Back, forward. Um, the trick to leading that basic weave is not to stop and go like hitting a brick wall. So this would be a very rough lead for her to follow. Back, forward, it's almost like Tourette syndrome. Instead, I think about if I'm heavy, pushing a heavy grocery cart through the grocery store, I kind of ease it to a stop and then I change direction and I ramp up. So um, a better lead, it's gonna create a more graceful follow and a prettier shape for her, is going to be ramping it down and then getting out, okay? So I don't want to stop and go. I want to ramp down, hunker down into the ground and then I come out, okay? Um, some technique pieces for the lady I, in that basic weave. After I've done my reverse turn, slow, quick, quick. As soon as I feel him stomp and, and ramp down, I'm like, oh, I know what this is, and I'm making an informed choice to follow this. Um, and I follow with a pretty aggressive forward connection with my rib. That's where the pretty shape comes from. The shape doesn't come from bending my lower back. It actually comes from pressing my rib up into him, that would look like this. Our reverse turn. So I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. slow, quick, quick, you can see from the side, slow, so I'm jetting that rib up into him. So the more extreme shape I want, I need to get lower in the knees, and I need to lift my sides long, I need to keep my head left as opposed to back is bad. Left is good. And the bigger your shape is, the lower our legs are, the more we need to lift our sides. So slow, quick, 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 quick. Now I opened my head on that one. That's artistically my preference. I also like to open my head when I'm doing a hard telemark. But the crazy thing is in the ISTD book, very few head positions are dictated. So artistically, well, I actually can do whatever I want, but there are just some like culturally common ways that we do things that are acceptable variations. So I think it's prettiest to open my head. Um, but that obviously depends on you and your partner. If you're not sure what to do, videotape yourselves. You're probably gonna have a natural ability um, or flexibility that's better one way or the other. So look at yourselves in a video say, oh, we look better with the head open or we look better with her head closed. Um, there's not a right or wrong there, okay? And um, actually, let me show that in the Hubbard Telemark for lady as well. So um, I'm doing this in the corner. So this would be a closed head in the Hubbard Telemark. Looking left, looking left, looking left, looking left, left, left. That's an option. I personally like to open my head that would look like this, 
opening out, and I'm looking right, and then I finish the feather to my left. Hopefully we can see the difference. Again, um, neither is right or wrong, just whatever you prefer. Um, ladies, general suggestion in Foxtrot, um, for my students, I see the lady's head moving too quickly. So if you are going to open up the head, do it slow. It's hard, you're gonna to wanna to time it with the feet. For example, I'll show it wrong first. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. And I actually want to never actually cease the head movement. It's more of a gradual turn and a gradual turn. It's actually quite hard to do. It's called separate in a box. The way we're built as human beings, you're going to want to do everything at once, everything at once. Um, and instead, for example, if I were turning to promenade as lady, um, say in an open impetus turn, um, I would think foot, and then I would take my knees, and then I would shove him with my hip, and my head wouldn't even complete the full promenade position until I was halfway into my next figure. So we're always delaying the head as lady. Another way I like to think of it is dancing the head, like the head is dancing to the music as well, but it's taking four beats to do something while the feet are taking one or two beats to do something. So that's something you can practice at home as well, a slow head. Um, do, 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 leads, the hover telemark. Uh, this, will, this technique will apply in you know, your change of direction as well. I would love it when you come forward in that corner to, to turn her. If you can think about turning your left foot out, hopefully we can see that. Now I'm gonna pretend I have a little hook in my right hip and whoop, I'm gonna hook up underneath of her, and then I'll swing my body weight up and underneath and out. Um, and for today's purposes, I showed the hover telemark um, going into an outside partner position and then into the feather. Um, another thing I love about this figure is you can also turn it to promenade um, in syllabus. That would look like this for man, slow, quick, quick, and then I can head out and away from promenade, um, or close it out in a feather, but um, artistically, you can do either of those. So if you're doing your own choreography, I suggest videotaping and see, well, gosh, do we look better ending ours in promenade or outside a partner? Um, so, another thing I see a uh, common problem with my students is they lift the feet. So the shape comes from dragging the feet. Uh, so, for example, this would be lifting the feet, which, by the way, is fabulous for tango, but not so much for foxtrot. So what I see, I'll show it wrong, is slow, quick, quick, and the foot is actually lifting off the ground. The challenge with that is as soon as you lift the foot off the ground and you're doing a swinging dance, you're going to jack up your top line. That would apply to lady two. We don't want to lift those feet. We always have them connected. Um, also, we only go through that flat position when we're passing the feet. It's just uh, one shake of a lamb's tail, we go through that. Um, if you're doing competition, there are no flats. So if you do step on a flat, that's not a toe. It's not a toe flat. It's not a heel flat. Maintain that heel as long as you can. That'll help you get good flight. See, as long as that toe is up, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And then I slide through. Same thing when I move backwards. Doesn't matter if it's man or lady. If I delay placing the bottom of the foot on the floor when I go backwards, that would look like this. Delay, 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 and I'm still delaying, 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 delaying. And then I pull through. You're gonna get longer strides, more graceful dancing. Bigger shapes. The shape comes from being split weight, and if you're on a flat, you're almost fully weighted on that foot. So it's a pretty much guarantee you're gonna have bad shaping. So, um, whenever you're passing those feet, think I'm on a toe, I'm on a heel, I'm on a toe, I'm on a heel, and that'll help you swing up underneath your partner. Um, and it leads, it's not just the lady swinging up underneath the partner, you're gonna do that as well. When you're trying to shape her, so many guys try and help the lady um, shape or go outside a partner, inside a partner, promenade. This lady, I don't wanna feel diddly squat from your shoulders. I wanna feel the leads from your heels and toes and from your knees and from your hip. So we're very low and bendy for both man and lady in our foxtrot below the hip. And then from the waist up, we're very, very, very raised up. So leads, I want you to think about leading her with this lower rib. Ladies, we're thinking about having a forward pressure up into him. 
more of a yoga bridge type position. Um, and let me show that for a second. I don't know if they, can the camera zoom in this close? So um, for both man and lady, if you try this at home, this is gonna help your dancing and your flexibility. So you're gonna go down the wall at home. Careful, 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 careful. Um, and you just go down as low as you go. Now that flexibility is gonna vary per person. You just do what's comfortable for you. You never wanna do anything that hurts. Stop before it hurts. Um, but if you do little stretches each day, you'll find that your flexibility magically increases over time um, and you'll become um, a much lighter lead. Yes, there's such a thing as a heavy lead. We want to feel a light lead where we feel it below and can respond ourselves versus him, man handling us to positions, very uncomfortable. Um, leads, the lead is gonna be lower into her than you think it is for all of these figures. So always think about swinging up underneath your girl. So slow, give her a good low lead with the knee, with the hip. Um, as lady, we're naturally built with a lower center of balance than you are. We generally have an hourglass shape. He generally has that um, more musculature on the top, so more of a triangle shape. So if you try to lead us with the top line, it is all over the top of us and it's very creepy, invades her personal space. If he swings up underneath of me, he almost uh, tricks me into doing my correct footwork. And if he's very stable in the top, I can really clearly feel all of his heels and toes, which is a huge part of the lead. I'm looking for different cues as lady, almost like reading when I'm dancing. And if a word is a little bit misspelled, I'm probably gonna get it, but the more aspects of the lead you misspell, the less likely she is to follow light and graceful and beautifully. Um, so leads, make sure to keep this like a steel frame up on the top. We have more bent knees and you realize really the only time you're gonna have a straight leg action is like the middle of that feather. That entire basic weave is gonna be bent in the knees. Uh, even in promenade, I never wanna have a completely, if I were to do a hover telemark to promenade, I would never have a straight leg action. Straight and high is, is very hard to balance. So I'm always gonna have slight flex in the legs. That puts my body weight up underneath of her so she can feel what my feet are doing. It also makes more balance for me, okay? Um, what else do I wanna talk about today? Um, a little bit about timing. Um, unfortunately, um, I can't do music, I don't think, on YouTube, even though I do pay for an ASCAP membership, so I might just count it for you, but... Um, Social dancers first learn to dance with the slow, quick, quick, or one, three, four, five, seven, eight. I'll show that with the feather in three, first as man, then as lady. Five, six, seven, this is the okay social way. One, three, four, five, seven, eight. It's very mechanical and it stops your body flight every four beats. So it ends up being quite jerky. Instead, we wanna delay that second quick or delay the four beat and go four and up. It'll create a more soft wave-like action in your fox trot. Um, and certainly for competitive dancers, this is a must do. So instead, what we wanna do is five, six, seven, and slow. Quick, quick, and a slow. And quick, quick, and a. So all of those steps are striking a little bit later than you think you should. Or for lady, Five, six, seven, we have a one, two, three, four, and up. Five, six, seven, eight, and up. So it's very, very, very delayed. And ladies, um, since we're following, we have a little cheat. I always want to step slightly later than my man. Um, the only exception would be in the middle of the weave because I got, get an early lead for that. As soon as we do that check, I'm like, oh, I know this is going into a weave. And at that point, I'm going forward, so I'm going to move pretty aggressively. But certainly as lady, whenever I move backwards, I'm gonna delay stepping on that foot as long as I can. And if you think about this more advanced delayed timing, uh, if you're gonna be lighter, lightness has nothing to do with the arms. It has to do with how soon you're placing your body weight. Um, so I wanna have a pretty strong forward connection to my partner with my rib. Whether I'm moving forward or backwards does not matter. Um, and I wanna delay placing the foot. So as long as my foot soul is not striking the ground, he can change his mind. And I'll lightly respond with my body weight. As soon as I roll onto that foot, if he changes his mind, which he does all the time competing in social dancing, 
He's got to shove me across the floor, and it's like driving a rocky uh, uh, rototiller through rocky soil. So if you keep that top of the foot as long as possible and a strong forward connection, you're going to be able to respond right away when he does change his mind. I mean, that's his job to change his mind. He's the driver. He's driving responsibly. He's trying to avoid other couples. Um, so we want to give him the freedom to do that without hanging on him. Um, final suggestion, ladies. I want clear head positions when you do open the head. Um, whether that's in promenade, outside of partner, closed position. So those would look like this. I'm closed. I'm outside. I'm in promenade. So what I see is kind of sort of going to each of those positions, something like this, closed, outside, promenade. And it makes the dancing look very small, um, definitely not competitive, and it's not even good floor craft. The other couples are looking at the faces of the dancers to indicate where they're going to dance next. So this is a closed position. I'm not looking out towards his ear, I'm looking very closed outside a partner, I'm looking outside of my elbow. Promenade position, I'm not looking inside of my elbow, I'm looking outside of my elbow. And I'm definitely still feeding this right rib and right hip to him, but I want to have an extreme head position. Same thing in the hover telomark, I'll show an incomplete head and a complete head. We want the complete heads for lady. So this would be, yeah, oh, acceptable, textbook correct. Slow, quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick. That is textbook correct dancing. Um, but it's certainly not competitive. Um, and, it, and like I said, it's also um, not going to be as aesthetically pleasing or functional in terms of floor craft. So when I open that head, ladies, I am going to go for the gusto. Slow. Go for it. Go for it. Look way outside. And go for it. Look way outside. So it's very clear um, that you know what you're doing and you're not just guessing. Okay? Um, lead, same thing applies for your head positions in your foxtrot. This dance is, is, well, one of many things that makes it hard is there's a lot of partner position switches. There's um, inside a partner, outside a partner, promenade. We have a wing position, I'm like in a, in a natural hovercross. So what do I do with my head in each of these things? Well, um, if I'm in promenade, as lead, same thing. I want to just turn my body to her, keep the arms still, and I want to look just outside of my hand. The leads tend to look either down at the floor or over in the lady's face. So the head is telling your girl you're doing something else than your body actually is. So, um, for example, um, if I were doing a hover tunnel mark to promenade, slow, I want to open the head and clearly indicate to everyone on the floor, including my partner, I'm dancing this way. That's where I am looking. Okay. Um, if you accidentally leave the head closed, which many men do, slow. Quick, quick as lady, I'm assuming that we're heading out outside a partner. I may not even turn to promenade. Um, so leads, we've got a couple primary positions here. So um, in your closed position, look out over your lady's shoulder. I often see looking at the floor, not sure why, the floor's not going anywhere. Look up. As a matter of fact, err on the side of caution. Look even more up. Look to the crown molding in the room or the curtains up on the ceiling. Maybe not the ceiling, that would look a little spacey, but the curtains lining up there would be great. If I'm outside a partner, I want to look even more left. If I'm in promenade, even more left, okay? So those are your three choices. Staring at your lady, hmm, pretty rarely we do that. I mean, possibly if you were doing a contra check or something fancy and open, but certainly would not dance around doing a feather and three or any of these steps I've shown today in bronze and silver staring at her. That's just creepy. Um, so, um, gosh, there's so many aspects um, of Foxtrot we could look at, and I, I don't want to um, keep you here watching a five-hour Foxtrot video, so I think I'll wrap it up with those concepts today. We might look at this again another time. If there's any dances or concepts you'd like me to focus on in future workshops on YouTube, please let me know. I am going to continue um, posting these free workshops as long as the governor has the dance studios closed due to coronavirus, because I've temporarily had to cancel all my Saturday group classes, and I miss you all so much. Um, and I feel like this affects dancers so much harder than the rest of the population, but this will be over soon, and I look forward to dancing with you soon and seeing your smiling faces. Um, and hopefully these have been some fun things you can ruminate on at home and make your foxtrot a little better. So thanks so much for watching today, guys, and if you liked the video, 
um, follow my YouTube channel and there will be many more.